Hi, I'm Adolf Oliver, and this is a video clip about solving systems of linear equations by the substitution method. Now remember, solving them by graphing, you can see what's going on, but it's real difficult unless you knock yourself out to become super accurate to get exactly what the xy value is of the solution. But there's no need to be super accurate with the grafting because the algebraic methods, and this is the first of them, the one known as substitution, will allow us to get the uh, answer right on the button. So here we go. The idea is simple. Substitution is a good name for it. You solve one of the equations for either x equals or y equals. It's your choice. Then plug that into the other equation. This is important the other equation because you need to combine the information from both to be able to get the system solution. Well solve that and that'll give you half the solution. Take and plug that into one of the original equations and you get the whole solution. Well let's take a look at how this works. Here's an example right here that we can just use to cement these ideas with. And notice that we have a gift here. This is not going to happen that often, but uh, when it does, you say thank you very much. One of the equations is already solved for one of the variables right here. This second guy, y equals. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug that into the y up in the first guy. Well, let me rewrite the first guy. 2x minus. Now, I'm going to replace the y, so put a set of parents in here to be able to put the value for y, and then it equals 12. So notice that what we've done here is we've rewritten the second equation here, the one we're going to substitute into, and the value that I'm going to replace, namely the y, I made a set of parents uh, to be able to plug in what we're going to substitute. Well, what are we going to substitute? Exactly what y equals, which is 4x minus 24. Well now notice this is an equation that has just one variable x in it. You can solve for x and that will give us the first half of our solution. Let's clean this up and get it. I got the 2x out in front. He's officially positive. I'll put a plus here to rub it in. Remember if you don't see a sign in the first guy you assume him to be plus. Then be careful here there's a minus in front of the parents. We're effectively using the distributive law here. You distribute the minus in. Minus times plus 4x. There's officially a plus here, but what you're going to end up with is negative 4x. And then minus times minus gives me plus. And then 1 times 24 is 24. So remember, when you're solving an equation, anytime you've got parents like this, Use the distributive law first to go in and uh, get rid of the parents. We want to know exactly how much we have of each of these guys. And once you do the distributive law, you now know it. Okay, well, let's see. Let's clean up a little bit here. On the left side, I've got 2x minus 4x. So let's see. That gives me negative 2x from these two. Then plus the 24 equals 12. Once you get each side cleaned up as much as you can like this, then of course what you simply do is we want to have x on the left, the plain numbers on the right, so the plus 24 has to go over as negative 24. So plus 24 to minus 24, okay. And so what I have left on the left side is minus 2x. This is plus 12 minus 24. Well, negative wins by 12, so the right side is negative 12. And now, of course, what we do is divide both sides by negative 2. Here we go. Okay, when we do that, I get x equals, well, the 2 minuses give me a plus. 12 divided by 2 is 6. So there's half the solution. Now, one of the nice things about the substitution method is there's uh, one of the original equations up here that's just perfectly suited to solve for the y. Okay, here it is. 
See this guy where we got y equals 4x minus 24? Rewrite it, but make a hole for the x because we're going to put that value in. And then minus 24. Well, what value are we going to use for x? The value we just got here, namely plus 6. So what have I got here? y equals 4 times 6, 24. So plus 24 minus 24, I think y equals 0. Okay, so having done that now, <coughs> we've got the system solution. Put the two of them together. System solution equals, well, the x value is 6. You could put a plus in front if you wanted. And the y value here is 0. So x equals 6 and y equals 0 is the system solution that will solve both of these original equations at the same time. Okay, well, now you know where the substitution name comes from. Let's take a look at some of these because we're often going to have to do a little bit of work. These aren't necessarily going to come nice and easy for us. Okay, here's one here that's definitely messier. Uh, we got lots of different numbers in here, and uh, there's clearly one variable that you're going to want to solve for here. What you do is you take a look for uh, an x or a y that has a nice plus 1 in front of it. Even a minus 1 is not bad. You wouldn't want to solve for any of these other guys because you'd have to divide by negative 3 or 7, and you get a whole bunch of fractions. Now, if you didn't make any mistakes, it would work. But the more fractions you have you work with, the more likely it is you will make a mistake. So here's the first guy right here on top that uh, I'm going to work with. I'm going to solve this guy right here for y equals. And so what I'm going to do is jump the 4x over the other side. So I'm going to have y equals 10. And the minus 4x goes over here is plus 4x. So plus 4x. Now let's double check to make sure that we got that right. Okay. Took the minus 4x, jumped it over as plus 4x, and we already had the 10. That looks good. Now you see what I mean here? Since we had a nice plus 1 in front of the y, then I don't get any fractions here. That makes my work easier. Okay. Now we're going to take this y value and plug them into the other equation. Remember, it is always important that you solve one of the equations for x equals or y equals, and then plug that into the other equation, because you have to get the full information to the problem, and you have to combine both the equations to do that. Okay, let's take this second guy and rewrite him. And what I'm going to do, again, is make a hole for the guy I'm going to plug in for, in this case, it's the y equals 20. So notice, I copy down this equation exactly like it is, but where there's a variable that I'm going to substitute for, I make a hole for it with a set of parents. Now, what is that value? Well, here it is. It's 10 plus 4x. Okay, now, we, of course, have got to do the distributive property here first before we can solve this. So I've got negative 3x out in front. Plus 7 times 10 is plus 70. Plus 7 times 4x is plus, uh, I think it's 28x. Huh? Now let's double check this. Plus 7 times 10 is plus 70. Plus 7 times plus 40, or plus 4x. 7 times 4 is 28. Okay, it looks good. And, of course, the right side is 20. Okay, well, let's keep going on this. First thing I'm going to do is combine the x's here. So minus 3x plus 28, positive wins by 25. So I got 25x plus 70 equals 20. Okay, take this uh, plus 70 and jump it over here as negative 70. And I've got then 25x equals, uh, what's it going to be, negative 50, I think? 
Well, okay. Now to solve for x, all we got to do is divide both sides by 25. Here we go. And so what do I get? I get x equals, well, it's going to be negative. There's one minus sign. 50 divided by 25, I think it's just 2. So there it is, x equals negative 2. Now, we want to solve for y. Well, remember, way back at the top up here, when we did rearranging, we ended up with an equation up here that was in the form y equals. This is the easiest guy to use now. It's y equals 10 plus 4x. So let me rewrite it here. y equals 10 plus 4x. Okay, there it is. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to plug our x value in. So I'm going to rewrite this with a hole for the x. So 10 plus 4, and there's a hole with a set of parents. And what are we going to plug into it? Negative 2. Well, okay, what's y equal then? y equals then 10. And, of course, uh, plus 4 times negative 2, I think it's negative 8. Huh? Well, I think y equals uh, positive 2, is it? There we go. So here we are. We've got our two values. These lines cross again. The system solution here is going to be x equals negative 2 and y equals positive 2. Okay, well, this was a good solution. The lines cross, but we'll be bumping into some bad ones along the line. Let's see what we have next here. <coughs> Ah, uh, yes. Well, notice here, uh, we've got two equations, and they're in standard form. For substitution, we've got to solve one of these guys for x equals or y equals. Uh, looks like, uh, you know, and we may get fractions or not here, but uh, it looks like the lowest coefficient is this negative 2y. So if I solve for y here, then that means I need to jump the x to the other side. So it'll be negative 8x. So what am I going to end up with here? Well, let's scoot over so I can jot this down. We'll have then the negative 2y that's still on the left equals 0 minus 8x. Well, I don't need to put the 0. That's nothing. Minus 8x. Okay, divide both sides by negative 2 to solve for y. This one comes out pretty good here. We get y equals the two minuses give me a plus, and 8 divided by 2 is 4, so I get 4x. So y equals plus 4x. Okay, well, I've got one of the equations uh, solved for one of the variables. Turned out that y again was... Uh, the easiest one to solve for here. And uh, so here it is. And what I'm going to do, of course, now is plug that into the second equation. So here we go. Let's rewrite that second equation. 5x minus 3. And the y, of course, we're going to replace. So I put a hole here with a set of parents equals 14. Well, what are we putting in for y? y equals plus 4x. Okay, that's the value that we just got over here for what y equals. Now let's solve this. Notice we only have the variable x. So I'm going to have 5x minus 3 times plus 4. I think that's negative 12. And then we have a single x equals 14. Okay, well, let's see. 5x minus 12 will give me, uh, what, negative 7x, I think? Okay. Negative wins by 7 equals 14. Well, let's divide both sides by negative 7 here. Here we go. Reduce the negative 7s. We get x equals, notice there's 1 minus. Here it is. 14 divided by 7 is 2. So there's half our solution right there. Now, 
Again, the nice thing about substitution is you've always got somebody from upstairs who's already set to give you the value for the other variable. Here it is right here. We've got y equals plus 4x. Let me just write it down completely. Okay, here it is. Now, of course, what we're going to do is we're going to plug in our x value. So I'm going to rewrite this y guy here using a hole for the x. y equals plus 4 times the x, and the x value is negative 2. Looks like uh, y equals what? Uh, 4 times 2 is 8, and there's one minus sign, negative 8. So there's the y value. So here's another guy that has a good solution. Okay, here we go. The system solution again is the following. x equals negative 2, and y equals negative 8. There it is. Okay, well, let's take a look at another one of these guys. Here is uh, another system. Let's get it up here so we can look at it right here. Okay. Now, ah, I noticed something here. Uh, see this first equation? If you go through and multiply everybody in this first equation by negative 1, 2x times negative 1 is negative 2x plus y times negative 1 is negative y. Negative 14 times negative 1 is positive 14. These two equations are the same, and if we were to graph them, they'd plot on top of each other, and we'd have officially infinite solutions. Well, let's go ahead. We're not graphing these guys, so uh, let's just take uh, the first guy. He's real easy to solve for y again. So if I do this, take the 2x and jump it over as negative 2x, I've got y equals negative 14 minus 2x. Okay, there's an equation all set to go to substitute into the second guy. So we're going to take, like we've done before, and plug it into the second guy. That means I've got to make a hole right here for the y because I'm going to replace it with what I got for y right here. So rewrite this and make a hole for the y. Here it is, and equals 14. Okay, well, what's I'm going to plug in for y? Negative 14 minus 2x. Okay, well now, before we go further on this, I've got to distribute the minus in. So I got the minus 2x out in front. There that is. The minus sign here just causes the signs to change inside. So we'll have plus 14 uh, plus 2x equals 14. Okay, oops. Now look at what happens. Combine the x's. Minus 2x plus 2x. There's the x's just that disappeared. And so what we have left here is 14 equals 14. Well now, it's real hard to solve for x when you don't have any x's left, and this is exactly what happens when you have a bad case. In a bad case, what happens is your variables disappears. Okay, variable disappears. Now, when that happens, you know you've got a bad case, but the question is, which one? To figure out which one it is, look at what's left. Okay, here we go. Look at this, and if the two sides are equal, if it is a true statement, and this is true, 14 equals 14, then that means that you have the same y intercepts okay doesn't mean the y intercept is 14 it just means they're the same so remember a bad case with the same y intercepts what you have then from this is the on top of case okay and the on top of case 
means you got the same equation. Well, we noticed that to begin with up here. These two guys are the same. Take either one of them, like this first guy, multiply by negative one, and you get the second. Okay, so what we've got here is the on top of case. And officially now, the answer for the on top of case is that you have infinite solutions. Sometimes uh, they'll give us the answer what that equation happens to be, but it doesn't do you much good because when you have infinite solutions, you don't know which one is the one that solves your problem. So this again was definitely a bad case, but when we have just two equations that we're plotting, we can tell which bad case it is. And since the uh, was a true statement here, which means the equations are the same, that means they're going to plot on top of each other. And if they plot on top of each other, you got infinite solutions. That would be the final answer that you go ahead and give here. You got infinite solutions. It's definitely a bad case. Okay, well, you can add bad cases, whether you graph them or use algebraic uh, solutions. Uh, if the system is bad, it's bad, and there's nothing you can do about it. Okay, let's look at another one here. Uh, here again are two equations, but notice one of them is particularly simple here. We got y equals negative 4. Well, uh, guess what? You know what the y value is already in your final solution. It's going to be negative 4, given if this is a good uh, solution. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that and plug it into the y right here. So negative 5x plus 6 times the y equals negative 24. Well, what's y equal? Negative 4. So here we go. I got negative 5x plus and minus, give me a minus, 6 times 4 is 24, equals negative 24. Well, if we solve this, notice the negative 24 goes over as positive 24. So I got negative 5x here equals, well, this is just 0 over here. Well, okay, now turn around and divide both sides by negative 5. And uh, the negative 5s cancel out. I get x equal, well, 0 over 5 is just 0. And uh, you could make it negative 0 if you want. But remember, 0 is the only number where its minus value and positive value are the same. So folks usually just turn around and just say x equals 0. Okay, well, we got uh, good x and y values here. So this one, real simply, the system solution equals x equals 0 and y equals negative 4. Turned out to be an easy one. Okay, let's take a look at uh, one last example here. And uh, here we go. Again, a system. And uh, let's see, once again, the uh, easiest one to solve for, since we're using substitution, is this y right here, because it's got a nice plus 1. So I'm going to take this minus 2x and jump it over to the other side here. And what that's going to give me, then, is the following here. It's going to give me y equals uh, 5. Let's make this look more like an equals. Uh, and the minus 2x goes over as plus 2x. Okay, so there we are. Okay, so I'm going to take this now and plug it into the second guy here. So negative 6x minus 3 times the y equals negative 10. Okay, what I did again is always whatever variable... I'm plugging in for, I make uh, a hole with a set of parents. Now, what we're going to do, of course, is plug in this value, 5 plus 2x 
Now we got an equation that just has x in it, so I can solve for that. But the first thing we got to do is uh, clean up the parents here. Use distributive law. Now remember, take the minus with the 3 and distribute that in. The minus 6x is out in front. Here it is. Negative 3 times 5 is negative 15. Negative 3 times plus 2x would give me negative. Looks like a 6x, huh? Okay. So let's check this again. I had negative 6x to minus 3 times the y, and it's 5 plus 2x I put in. Negative 15, negative 6x equals negative 10. Okay, what do I end up with here? Well, let's see what we got. Uh, we have here then the following. Uh, let's see, negative 12x huh? minus 15 equals negative 10. Okay, negative 15 goes over as positive 15. So going on further here, I've got negative 12x equals, uh, what's it going to be here, positive 5. Uh, so positive 5. Okay. Now, divide both sides by negative 12 to get the x value. I get x equals, don't forget, this is a minus also here. So uh, negative 5 twelfths. Now, you're not always going to get nice whole number answers like we have so far. In fact, in the real world, when you have real problems, you're always going to get fractions or decimal answers. But we got half of our answer here now. Okay, so now let's turn around and get the other half. Here comes y. Remember again, I've got that nice equation all set to go. Let me rewrite it here. y equals, uh, let's see, 5 plus 2x. That was from our guy up on top here that we used right here. Okay, well now we got an x value we're going to plug in. So I'm going to rewrite this as y equals 5 plus 2 times, and the x value is negative 5 over 12. Well, if you have a fraction multiplying somebody, it's safer if you make fractions out of everybody. So I'll put a 1 underneath here, and that simply reminds me that the 2 is upstairs. Okay, well, let's see. y then is going to equal 5. Now, I can do some cross-canceling. 2 goes once here. It goes 6 times there. So, it looks like I got negative 5, 6. Okay. Well, now, to turn around and get this, remember, this is 5 over 1. What I've got to do is convert this to the common denominator here, which is 6. So, if I multiply top and bottom of this guy by 6, 5 times 6 is 30. Uh, 1 times 6 is 6. Now, double check this. 30 divided by 6 is indeed 5, so I'm correct. And then minus 5, 6 here. So what have I got? I got uh, over 6 for sure. 30 minus 5 is 25. So 25, 6. Now, there's nothing I can reduce here. So I end up with my solution for y, y equals 25, 6. Okay, the system solution then, combining both of these together, okay, the x value is negative 5 twelfths. Couldn't reduce that any, so there it stays. The y value is 25, 6, okay, and couldn't reduce that anymore either. So there it is, our system solution. Okay, well, this is the substitution method, and it works particularly well when there is somebody in the original equations you can solve for either x equals or y equals. And what you do is you look and see if you can find an x or y that has a coefficient of plus 1 in front. See, we had that 
condition right here in this original setup. See the coefficient of plus one? That meant we got a nice clean solution for y equals. Well, you're not always going to be that lucky. Sometimes they get messier, and so uh, we'll introduce you to the elimination method, which works with the messier guys.